say that we have to give respect to the people who already joined and mashallah it is showing your commitment that 7 o'clock sir we started and almost 54 participants are there as a part of continue learning in the process safety management we as a assp quiz chapter has started process safety management forums and the main objective of this forum is to share a knowledge related to related to process safety and this is the fifth technical meet of this tenure and as we had decided earlier every month third wednesday we are organizing this process safety management technical meet the basic objective is we used to have a two speaker one is experienced guy who is having a rich experience to share with and one the newly uh, joined as a psm person so on behalf of ssp quiz chapter i would like to welcome both speaker mr mohammad munis and mr anirban mishra for today's event thank you very much brother over to you brother yeah thank you thank you okay. mr host for unmuting me <laughs> thank you jahad also thank you for your kind words and for explaining a little bit further further on on uh, why we are having these psms so um, i want to hand over now to mr uh, rajwal rutwik to act as a moderator and introduce our two uh, speakers for today's event so over to you mr rutwik Ramna, can you check? Ramna, please? please unmute. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just checking. Uh, he's on two devices. Can you hear me, Ramna? Yes, 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 yes sir. Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, sir. It's sound and clear. It's loud and clear, sir. Sound is clear. Good. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So let me restart. Uh, this one. Uh, I, why why i am hearing my voice again and again because you are on two devices it seems it's showing sir is it let yeah, me let me, come let me mute of... no let me mute one it will be okay yeah mute my telephone I'm... yeah yeah i did one sir it's okay now mute my telephone yeah it's okay it's okay sir now Oh uh, wait 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 sir please uh, because both names are same i have muted other one sir if you keep the other device a little bit far it will be okay i yeah, try now sir no sir is not getting earlier it was okay keep that one uh, with you sir don't, don't worry i will mute one just keep us now yeah now, it's clear now, now yeah loud and clear um, let me figure out just to... just to give me give me a moment please moment because again you have muted sir yeah yeah it's okay now it's okay now no 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 sorry sorry the other one is working sir can you hear me now yes sir 
loud and clear now. No. No, sir. That was okay, I think. Yeah, now try, sir. No. There is some issue with this. That was okay, it seems. Uh, just turn it on and mute here, sir. Uh, Earlier there was no echo, sir. Just keep that all that also. Just log in through the mobile also. It will be okay. Click that link in mobile. You will directly take it. Ramana, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. It's loud and clear, sir. Loud and clear. Ramana, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. It's loud yes, and clear. Sir. Ramana? Yes, sir. It's loud and clear. Maybe... Ramana, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. It's loud and clear. Yes, 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 sir. Ramana, can, can you hear me now? Maybe his speakers are muted, Ramana. Ramana. I think yeah, yeah. To... Mike is okay. You call him and let him know. Maybe his speakers Ramana, are can muted. You, I think you have muted me uh, from your end. No. Uh, Mr. Ramana, I think just call him. His speakers are muted, probably. I have sent a message. Oh, oh. So, till the time uh, Mr. Ujwal Ritik join us, I just would like to request our participants uh, for a few things. Kindly keep your mic muted. And if you have any questions in between presentation, uh, just write in this chat box, right? So a speaker will be able to give answer after presentation. And uh, we, if time permits, we will entertain all questions, inshallah. Uh, but if time is less, uh, we will go with three, four questions. I am sure uh, speaker will have no issues for answering the questions. Thank you, thank you. I can see both of you, so no issues. <laughs> and uh, uh, another thing is uh, when you are logging with two devices, make sure one of the speaker is uh, muted because you will have your echo in another device. So ensure that one is uh, because sometimes people do they talk through mobile and they watch in the uh, PC or something. So just ensure that your one of the speaker is muted.
Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. I'm I'm extremely sorry. It is my mistake. I should have uh, taken care of this. Uh, let me come straight to the point. Although you guys started that meeting so much well in time, and uh, uh, let me just uh, give a very uh, brief uh, introduction about uh, this program. Uh, these technical meets are basically meeting, so these are not training. Uh, as uh, I have been explaining that to, we need to use this for informing each other. We need to use this for uh, exchanging ideas and most importantly for networking. So our agenda is brief, trying to accommodate within 90 minutes as much as possible. Uh, and speakers, they should be to the point as to information exchange rather than training. And uh, I very much encourage the PSM uh, platform, the PSM uh, forum to organize uh, separate, you know, standalone seminars, training seminars, wherein newer and good topics could be, you know, explained in more detail. Uh, here, we are giving only 15 minutes to the speakers. Normally, there would be two speakers one would be, the first one would be the one who is talking about a case study. In today's uh, uh, case study, Mr. Uh, Anirban Mishra, he is going to talk about the uh, Faisin case, which, was, uh, which took place quite some time back, but it was a landmark case uh, in process safety management. And the other one, we are going to have experience sharing. That means what? That means the speaker, he or she had failed at some point of time and then that person learned from that failure. Learning from failure is called experience, not doing good. If I do something good, I don't learn from that because it was good. I just, uh, you know, uh, I may be, I may, I keep repeating that without improving. Whereas learning is that what was that delta where I failed? Failed means not that the entire project failed. Failed does not mean that the entire uh, program failed. Uh, the company failed. Although such learnings are also very good. But what I am telling failure means the delta where I committed some mistake, where there was an issue, where there was an accident. And therefore, I personally learned from there or something very close to me. So that is what we are talking of. And uh, today, we are going to learn from a very learned Mr. Muhammad. He is going to talk about uh, uh, this one, the SIMOPS, which is quite important, especially when you are in project stage, construction projects. SIMOP uh, uh, is, a, is a very... So let's learn from him as to what uh, he is, uh, what he, uh, uh, he has learned from his failures. So uh, let me now, without uh, uh, going much ado, and yeah, in between, we will have networking. We will be introducing the new members. Uh, towards the end, uh, the host will be giving more time for networking, uh, e even though the, the, the official time will be over. So this is our usual agenda. And thank you very much for providing me this opportunity. So uh, over to Anirban. Uh, please introduce yourself and then straightway get into your uh, case study. Just a minute, Mr. Anirban. Could you please try? Yes, sir. Good evening to all. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, good evening. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Ujul, sir. This presentation will be, uh, I can uh, 
uh, share the slide or uh, Ramal sir, you can uh, help me with the slides uh, to share. You can share it or uh, you want me yeah. to share it? Yeah, you can. Uh, you, if you can, it's not an issue. So it will be better actually, Ramana. Yeah, please try. Because I'm in the PC and uh, yeah, try it from your side. Okay, no issues. Yeah. Starts with uh, the PPT or. Uh... Yeah, other yeah. one, PDF. Yeah. It starts with the uh, PPT. PDF, both, no problem. <clears throat> PDF, or, no, which one you want? One by one only I can do it, right? Yeah, PDF, no problem. We can yeah, start. Okay. Before okay. this, actually, why, like Ujjal sir is saying, uh, this incident is very important. And after this incident, actually, the the main hazard, the belief is introduced, they recognized more prominently after this incident. This is the phase in refinery, the small introduction for the refinery actually. The located south of Lyon, the commission in July 64, 1964, and designed to process 1.7 million tons of petroleum per year. In early 66, 1960, the refinery was fitted with a pressurized liquid petroleum gas, that is LPC storage facility having a total capacity of 13,100 cubic meter. And the site received authorization by the prefectural order dated with the April 10. That is the introduction actually. The LPG storage area was located in a refinery zone B, south of the production unit, in addition to the LPG storage facilities. So these are the uh, facilities you can, we can see on the figure. Then, uh, yeah. these are there. No, I, I, it's not so going can, back. Next, next slide, sir. Okay. Oh, it's 20 pages are there. Uh, no, we can directly go to that. This is a small okay. introduction, actually. Okay. So the protective for the tank devices are, the spheres are equipped with the two valves that is surpassed 1910, 16 to 18 type of the butane spheres. And the surplus 1910 P4 four inch to 6 inch type of propane spheres. Only one is operation at a time, while the three way double valve is mounted upstream. There the are compliant with the American standard API 520, September 1960. This is the standard actually. And the, for the cooling purpose, the spheres are equipped with the following cooling apparatus that is, two spraying rings on the upper section and one on the mid position, a spraying system for the lower section. These are the cooling system for the protected of the sphere. Then the, we, we can directly go to the uh, incident. On the morning of 4th January 1966, a series of explosions, the fire occurred in the refinery of LPG storage zone. So the chronology is on 4th, January sphere T, that is tank 61443 referred to the 443, contained a gas having an excessive ethane contained 12%, also high purity propane was also added. At the time of the incident, the sphere was being filled by the site's units. Analysis are required to monitor the changes of the product, and consequently, on January 3rd, a request to take a product sample was issued. A laboratory technician was in charge of the operation. A purge is required before the conducting of the operation. Before 6.40 a.m., while it was still night time and with not much ambient lighting, the laboratory taking chan entered the area to take a sample from the spear. In order to perform the initial purge operation, he asked for assistance from a security agent and a helper who would be performing the operation. The lower sampling tap was normally used for sampling operation, as the three side sampling taps were often frozen and difficult to access. On 6.40 a.m., the helper claims that he opened the lower valve halfway, then the opened the upper valve even farther. The sodium containing water poured out and a small amount of gas was released. He then closed the upper valve, 
before finishing the purge he opened the valve again a bit of liquid flowed out that st then stopped he opened the upper valve wide open after a few seconds the noise of an explosion was heard and the propane sudden blew out requesting out of the sump splashing the operator in the face and arm making him jump back with his safety goggles reefed up he attempted to find his way back through the cloud to close the upper valve but the mobile valve wrench the knot of which was not secured and slipped out of the steam square so he was unable to fit it back on the valve which had already become frozen by the release of gas forgetting about the lower valve the two agents gave up re retreat and sounded in the internal alarm then 6:40 to 6:50 am 10 minutes the establishment security crew also tried unsuccessfully to stop the leak but valves are frozen due to their particular practically being no wind at all the very low temperature the atmospheric condition were helpful in diffusing the glass gas cloud according to the witness the 1 to 1.5 meter thick propane cloud left the establishment and expanded by gravity onto the a7 motorway there was a motorway nearby the sphere and 650 the guard house was informed the employees attempted to stop the traffic 650 to 6705 the helpers had performed the purge operation stop the motors pumping station connect to the sphere at 655 am at exactly 7.1 am a car entered to the cloud it drives along a road leading to the departmental road running parallel to the motorway despite signals from one of the refineries guard to stop the vehicle stops approximately 160 meter to the east of sphere 443 the cloud ignites against a hot point on the vehicle and the flame moves quickly by successive laps so we can see the sphere how the uh, the fire it uh, sparks and it goes on in 75 the moment the emergency services begin to arrive in successive waves they the firefighters attempted to unsuccessfully stop the leak it should noted with the spraying rings of the two spheres in the neighboring lpg storage facility were activated supplied a branch connection from the refinery firefighting network then 720 the site siren is triggered the external firemen and the altered the nearby the resident and the refinery guards also they came then starting at 730 firefighters from the line the uh, nearby the area they came actually with uh, nearly 50 minutes after the leak began so it is continuously leaking and it is a huge cloud is gathering on nearby that uh, sphere so 745 the safety valve on the sphere 443 opens due to the internal pressure of the lpg upon release the gas immediately vaporizes and ignites resulting in a 10 meter high torch we can see on the uh, the torch in the picture so around 8:15 am the rescue services set up high power all fire that is type secure rescue vehicle is set up however due to operating mistake the unit becomes boils down and remains blocked for 15 to 20 minutes so the delay of the firemen and the other services to come down to uh, settle down the fire it was because a bit late then around 8:30 it starts 7:15 after one of the equipment install a draw water from the canal but operation slowed down again the water was not there around 8:45 men to spear 430 443 explodes a fireball forms in a just few seconds and reaches nearby 250 meter in diameter reaching 400 meter in height 855 the emergency shut down the unit is ordered zone b is completely evacuated all the personnel who had survived the explosion fall back then uh, we can see the next uh, remember we can consequence we can go to the next slide next please So we can see the spheres actually the general condition of the LPG spheres after the accident. So after this accident, by applying the ratings rules of the 18 parameters of the scale made official in February 1994 by the Committee of Competent Authorities of the Member State, which oversees the application of the Seveso Directive, the accident can be characterized the four in, uh, incident indices. that is based on the information available that is one dangerous material release 
human and social consequences and the environmental consequences and the economic consequences these are the then after the next you can see the tanks area and the spears then at this period butane 463 it is ruptured 462 butane it is also ruptured 461 butane spear that also ruptured propane 440 441 propane spear also and 460 butane also ruptured then we can see sir the pictures how the consequence was there how it big it was levy horizontal tanks also ruptured then the piping where it was condition of the hydrocarbon lines also located near by the motorway overpasses according to the reports complied with the accident the destruction essentially caused by the flying derbies from the exploded spears then we can see here the spear and the 442 and 443 the projectiles the elements dimension was 19 to 21 that is estimated weight is 80 88.2 and the distance is covered is 138 meters we can see it almost 270 meters also the projectiles are gone the derbies and it's damaged the entire area so we can see this the roofs damaged 2.2 km away walls moved at the distance of 4.2 km windows broken further 8 km away the blast from the explosion was felt as far as veni approximately 16 km upstream of from the refinery doors so origin and causes of the circumstances the leak and this is the blevy actually the blevy ones that is boiling liquid expanding by vapor expansion and the blevy second blevy then we can go to the causes actually sampling devices on the lower section the overall operation was examined in conjunction with the technical characteristics of the testimonies of persons concerned formation of ice plug based on the chronology events during the maneuver then we can directly go to the lesson learn actually after this incident led to extensive reform the technical regulations applicable to petrol insulation the ministerial order of september 67 1967 that is modified to 1973 to 75 concerning the refineries in the result of the work undertaken by the commission formed by the administration and the profession of the defines a new provision such as a new classification of liquid and the liquefied hydrocarbons dealing not only with the ignition criteria but with treatment and storage conditions reheated product product liquefied under pressure and these are the then the definition of the dangerous and danger prone zones around petroleum insulations type 1 type 2 depending on the whether combustible vapors appear during the normal operation or in abnormal condition the assignment of location rules and notably the distances to be respected between the insulation themselves as well in the relation to the external third party so these are the things we can lesson learn where possible the direct draining of aqueous liquid from the lpg vessel should be avoided on systems that have to be regularly operated and in particular with the large volume of lpg at high pressure could accidentally be released if it is not practical to install a closed draining system then consideration should be given to the use of the a dewatering plot which may be positively isolated from the main vessel during the operation then the design consideration what was the problem with the design fit a remotely a remotely control we learned from the uh, lesson actually uh, install a flammable gas detector provide a early warning of a leak provide dealers system with the sufficient water supply to flood the surface of the storage vessel these systems must be regularly maintained and tested slope the ground so that any slip spillage runs off to a collection pit and does not accumulate under storage vessel 
insulate vessels with a fire resident uh, resistant insulation such as the vermiculite or mount the vessels with the same and similar the legs of the spheres should be protected against the fire impact of the missiles then for the operating operate, operating condition considerations management and the supervisor must ensure that the operators apply the correct operating procedures this involves regular training observation of the work practices consideration must be given to the work conditions for hazardous operations this should include the access lighting availability of the tools as well as effectively of intended operating procedure for the emergency response at facilities handling lpg or similar products firefighters must be trained in the correct approach to dealing with a storage vessel engulfed by fire the time to bleed is difficult to assess and depends on the number of factors which are not readily determined in an emergency the principle to be applied to cool the affected tank cool insulations in the vicinity and ensure the emergency responders are kept at a safe distance as far as possible then failures in the technical measures the design scored pipe work draining and flushing sample points the escaping liquid accumulated beneath the storage sphere rather than the draining away from it to a place where it could be allowed to burn harmlessly secondary containment that the bonds it took 10 minutes to raise the alarm as the operator traveled on foot 800 meter to alert other people he was afraid to use the local telephone or start his truck and drive there was no strategy for raising the alarm in the event of flammable release operating procedures emergency procedure then emergency operating procedure training attempts to keep motor vehicles away were only partially successful the fire fighting strategy adopted adopted was inappropriate the local fire brigade had not been briefed about how to deal with such an accident then the emergency response spill control site emergency plan fire fighting many of the design deficiencies such as insulation or permanent water sprays on the spears and the reinforcement of the legs which are now standard have been incorporated into codes of practice following the incident so these are the failures techniques measures and we lessons uh, learned from this incident any question sir uh very good uh, anirban uh, i think uh, the 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 i i like two things uh first thing that uh, uh, people they think that while presenting such seminars they must use powerpoint presentation that's not required anyone who you know anyone anyone who wants to present come forward present for a short case and uh, uh, that's what you have done coming back uh, fizin case uh, is uh, where glivy started boiling liquid expanding vapor uh, explosion and uh, this has this case has been studied again and again and again even now uh, in uh, some french universities they are still studying this case so that's the beauty of this case uh, at this point uh, let's uh, take a few questions uh, please uh, uh, switch on your mic ask your question anyone uh i encourage uh, i encourage uh, people to ask uh, questions ramana uh, am i audible yes sir you are audible loud and clear uh hello uh, please yes, introduce sir. yourself uh my name is faisal abdullah and uh, thank you mr anivar thank you for sharing this uh, event actually <clears throat> just one uh, query regarding this 
uh, there was an uh, means like as you said there was uh, the failure was related to the operators not following the operating procedures actually so i was just interested means like if you can share me say, what was the means like what action was taken regarding this actually means like uh, because i i have understanding that okay there are certain things that needs to be done when uh, the operators are is like the or the operating procedures are not exactly being practiced actually so yes, but i was just interested in the outcome of this event actually in with reference to this event what was the like what was the action taken in this regard actually so if you just can throw some light on yeah, that I'll, i'll put some light on that actually what happened uncontrolled releases had occurred previously under a butane sphere in august 64 1964 and under a propane sphere in february 1965 the releases were eventually brought under control without ignition these two incident led to the operating procedure for sampling being drawn up which stipulated that the upper valve should be open quarter way and then the lower valve should be progressively open but never fully but at in this case actually 640 am the operator opened the two valves in series on the bottom of the spear in order to drain off the aqueous la- layer firstly he opened the lower valve half way then the upper valve even further this was the reverse sequence to that laid down in a recently issued operating procedure so that is the direct operating procedure has not been followed actually here in this case there was a two releases on august 64 and february 1965 uh thank you mr anibaran actually uh, yes uh, i understood that point actually um uh, uh, i think uh, i was not clear enough the only thing was uh, what i was interested in uh, actually means like what was the out means like was there any action taken this like well, how the we can uh, uh, ensure that operators follow the exact operating procedure or uh, what we can do or is has there has there been done anything in that regard after this event or after this uh, uh, event actually so that so is what means like i was interested in what has been done our nest and the training Wish. and the, uh, like lessons learned from the uh, like the past incidents and the accidents actually this is the major thing we can discuss like uh, in the training we, we have discussed and how to train the operators and the involved in the process so th- these are the things actually we need to discuss on that part uh, so or ujjal thank, thank you mr can assist on that yeah uh, no that's a good uh, this one see uh, what happens uh, whenever there is a human error it is just a beginning of uh, the 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 uh, investigation human error is like gravity how did the ball fall because there was gravity this is not the end of it operator mistake yes operators operators are human they will make mistake they will commit mistakes that does not mean that every time there has to be an accident and therefore the 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 major lesson learned from this incident was not an operator uh, issue but the hardware issue the configuration issue the laws the the standards nfpa api everything got changed after this so that is what is the real lesson learned uh, you know ball has to fall down it cannot go up uh, it has to fall down because there is gravity same way human human will operators will make mistake for given i mean it is always given that operator will make mistake therefore it is the hardware engineering control that needs to be brought in okay uh, do we have any other question let's go for another question please one more question at this point of yes. time yes sir uh, this is the liarshad uh, this is the liarshad uh, and a wonderful uh, presentation on anirban uh, being at the cost of uh, sounding knife uh, quite of us are uh, not from psm Uh, may i request you anirban to please uh, brief us a little bit about uh, belief yes sir absolutely sir yeah yeah please go ahead sir believe the uh, regarding this actually in this case boiling liquid expanding vapor is explosion 
I mean, uh, so what it was offered approximately two hours yeah. according to the period document. Uh, yeah, the, I'll just yes, sir, absolutely. The one second. Boiling liquid expanding vapor explosions are a particular hazard where flammable substances are stored in a pressure vessel. A bleefy generally occurs when a, such a pressure vessel is exposed to the fire and the metal losses strength and ruptures. This is often below the maximum design pressure of the vessel. Particularly vulnerable are those parts of the vessel only in contact with the vapor phase as the bulk liquid absorbs some of the thermal energy. So the essential features of Levy are the vessel fails, the flask of a vapor from the superheated liquid, then combustion of the vapor. The Levy usually generates missiles, which may be the fragments created in the course of the rupture, but also the cell of the vessel itself. The mechanical energy release is high at the moment of bursting, and this can lead to a vessel rocketing. So this is, uh, we can... Uh, uh, Actually, say that is the missile kind of things. Uh, the derbies go uh, in this case, it goes up to 600 meters. Like uh, Mr. Balasar, you remember, and the PSM class uh, explains actually how the BLEVI is uh, dangerous. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, thank you. Thank uh, you. Good one, uh, Nirban. Got it. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, now uh, it's time for uh, uh, some uh, introductions. Uh, I would request anyone who has joined this uh, uh, these meetings for the first time, uh, please uh, come forward, introduce yourself briefly. Anyone who is joining this these meetings, this PSM technical meetings for the first time. Please uh, uh, switch on your mic. Uh, hi, it's uh, Muhammad Munis. I've joined it for the first time, but because I'm the next speaker, I'll be introducing myself anyway. So uh -huh. I'll let it pass okay. to okay. the next member. Great. Yeah. Is there anyone uh, else? Yeah, sir. Good okay. evening, sir. I am Hikandra Kumar. Yeah. I am uh, working in uh, as a process engineer in PCIC, Petroleum Coke Industries Company. This is my first time uh, I am joining in this uh, Zoom meet. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. Great. Thank you, uh, welcome. Uh, can you can you just uh, uh, spell uh, your name? Uh, because I, I, I heard a little something different, I think. Yeah, my name is Hitendra Kumar. H-I-T-E-N-D-R-A. Hitendra okay. Kumar. K-U-M-A-R. It's uh, yeah. I thought I, I heard Jitendra Kumar. So you are Jitendra Kumar, and you are process engineer in PCS PCIC. Yes, sir. Petro Coke industry. Yeah. Yes, sir. Very good. Welcome, uh, Kumar. Thank uh, you. Is sir. there anyone else? Yeah. Hi. Good evening. Myself, Anu. Good evening. Myself, Anu. This is for the first time I'm uh, joining such a meeting. And I've been uh, working as a safety officer in a private firm. So I'm. Uh, which in, private firm you are it, working? Vision, my company name is Vision International. We are uh, working in KNPC and KOC as a, as a contractor. Uh -huh. So, what exactly you are doing? I'm a safety officer there. So, we are basically into geotechnical investigations. Uh, so, we have our. Um, uh, drilling bricks, uh, collecting the sa soil samples and uh, taking back to the labs and doing uh, some you know, lab tests. Mm, very good. You are Anu. Mm. Yes, Anu. Anu. A N U. A N double O P. Anu Shankar Mangala. Okay, wonderful. Welcome, Anu. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Hi, sir. This is, uh, is there this anyone is else? here. Yeah. Yeah. Dinesh. Hi, yeah, Dinesh Kumar. I am working as a safety engineer in Al Mundas. Mm -hmm. And what uh, kind of job you are doing? Sir, we are doing insulation maintenance. I mean, your company. In uh, Mina Refinery, NPC. Okay. Insulation maintenance mm -hmm. in Mina Refinery. Okay. Well. 
welcome dinesh welcome uh, do we have more people new people joining hi sir good evening this is uh, burhanuddin so i uh, am working as an environment engineer in uh, kipik uh um, b- um, b- um again spell your uh, name please b u r h a n burhanuddin you uh, burhanuddin yes welcome burhanuddin uh, welcome so uh, what kind of job you are engaged in i am in uh, corporate uh, environment division mm-hmm. so we are uh, of Uh, we are into making uh, we are developing procedures and uh, mm-hmm. also like uh, the revision uh, revision of plans review of uh, <coughs> plans etc mm-hmm. mm-hmm. so you have already developed your uh, aspect impact register we have developed the procedures sir mm-hmm. and uh, we are okay. we have just initiated like uh, developing the aspect register for each unit mm. very good mm, very good welcome to this forum uh burhanin din uh, is there anyone else yes my name is oh yes uh, my name is daiju davies uh, i'm working as senior hc advisor for petrofair uh, gcp 32 project koc good can you can you please uh, g- give your name once again Daiju Davis D A Daiju Davis yes uh-huh. uh welcome Daiju welcome to this Thank forum uh-huh. uh, and uh, what kind of advice you are giving i mean as an advisor uh, what kind of uh, what task normally you are handling hello hello yeah uh, petrofag is cpc contract for the gc territory project so uh, for our, our work scope i mean uh, pers- i mean my in, from my side and oversee the day to day to see activities in accordance with the uh, designated area of responsibility then ensure implementation of a project atc plan and operational control procedures mm-hmm. requirements in the area of responsibility like that good good uh, uh, welcome <laughs> Uh, so now uh, we will uh, move on to the next speaker and uh, as uh, uh, we just now heard from him even he is joining for the first time but uh, he at the same time he is uh, an experienced uh, person in technical safety in uh, you know technical project project technical safety process safety so uh, i would request mohammed uh, to please self introduce yourself uh mr mohammed munis and then uh, start uh, let's uh, learn from you where did you fail fail go ahead mohammed yeah so thank you mr rochwal and uh, thank you very much to the entire committee for giving the opportunity to speak here and uh, it's really nice to be on this forum It gives me real indeed uh, good pleasure to present here um talking about the topic which is simultaneous operations and uh, um, and and last but not the least thanks a lot to mr rajwal for defining the scope of work for today uh, this was really useful uh, i guess uh, as and as mr rajwal said failure doesn't really mean that your project failed to kick off or your job was canned or uh, somebody was reprimanded or something failure also means challenges you faced so you want to do something and you want to do it in in a typical way but then that normal common popular way you could not achieve the results so you had to think of another way of doing it so you learn from your failure or you learn from your challenges so um there i have made some last minute changes to with the narrative i was trying to put in today so hopefully we will uh, uh, what we, whatever we will do today it will be uh, kind of something learning from challenges and failures uh, as simops is uh, i think i'll just introduce my slides now uh, so i'll share the screen 
So, Mr. Raman, how can I? I'm I'm seeing only an option for. Okay, I got it now. Okay. okay. Yeah. So uh, I think I'll have to come back here again. Microsoft PowerPoint. Sorry, this is the way around. Okay, let me make it full screen. So the plan is to introduce SimOps, not just that it is something which we do every day. So even, if we, uh, even if we go through the, what is a typical methodology for SimOps, that will be kind of overcoming at least one challenge in this procedure or in this uh, aspect. So we'll go through what is SimOps, what is not SimOps, and how do we typically do it? But then there can be some deviations which you might encounter in your day-to-day -day job and how you can go around those deviations. And then also we will also give some examples um, and some case studies, or you can call safety moment to go through it, which will give some uh, understanding of the failures which may happen if SIMOPS procedures and SIMOPS understanding is not followed thoroughly. So, okay, trying to go to the next slide here. So yeah, talking about myself, um, I have, uh, my name is Mohammed Munis, as you now already know. Um, I've been working in process safety for about 15 years. Before that, I was in QHSE for three years. So in total, I have, you can say, 18 years experience of oil and gas. 15 years is in process safety or technical safety. And I have worked with operators, EPCs, consultancies, as well as regulators, which is uh, to say some government departments. Uh, I have an MSc as a degree, and I'm also a member, in addition to SSP, I'm also a member of ICAMI UK and a certified functional safety engineer. Uh, currently, I'm uh, working with KOC, Kuwait Oil Company, as a consultant in PSM. So I think that's pretty comprehensive introduction. So I'll now move on to the next slide. I'm sorry, I was not intended to be this way. So yeah, what is SIMOPS? What is simultaneous operations? I, uh, from what I gather from the meeting and uh, that there are a lot of people who are from HSE background here attending the meeting today. So SIMOPS is something if you are an HSE officer or a safety officer, you might come across a lot in your day-to-day -day work. SIMOPS is called simultaneous operations. So two things happen simultaneously. There are so many ways two things can happen simultaneously, but SIMOPS is a very particular aspect and I'll explain that. Um, so it's quite important to understand what is SIMOPS, what is not SIMOPS, and how do you manage SIMOPS? What are the key aspects of managing SIMOPS? And what are the failures which can happen in a SIMOPS? So I'm, I'm going through how is it different from normal operations? So in normal operation, there is another thing called concurrent operations, and there are two different words. So CONOPS, which is concurrent operations. This is not SIMOPS. And uh, the, when I say this is not SIMOPS, this means that it, it does not require spatial controls, which we will talk about later. What are the spatial controls in SIMOPS? So whenever you are in a company and there are two operations happening at the same time, you, any, any, they can be called concurrent operations. So just going through the definition, there are two or more non-routine activities carried out in close proximity in space and time, but under a single organization's management system, for example, so by management system, we mean permit to work. So if you are having two activities, but the work permit is issued by the same body, then it will be a concurrent operation. It will not be a simultaneous operation. So just to give, and simultaneous operation on the other hand is the same thing, but the only difference is the one which is in red. So it is done by two parties with their own work procedures and safety management systems. And I'll give you an example in the next slide. So for example, uh, and now we are talking concurrent operations first. For example, hot works carried out by maintenance contractor on a producing facility. 
So if you have a producing facility where production is managed by production operations department or any company can call them by different team names. So, but call, call them operations. So operation teams manage the, manages the production as is always the case. And then you have site another contractor who has to do some hot works. So this hot works will be carried out by maintenance contractor, but under the permit, which will be issued from, per, from production operations. So this hot work, sorry, this hot work will be done by a management contractor on the same site, which is controlled by this production operation. And the, and the production operation team will be the one who will be issuing the permit to work for this hot works. So work will be done under common management by production operations. And therefore, it will be safely implemented because one party has oversight of both the things. So this is a concurrent operation. On the other hand, let's look at simultaneous operation. So for example, an EPC contractor is commissioning a new equipment on a site. And that site, the other bits of the site are already running, uh, the existing bits managed by production operations and you are commissioning a new equipment on the side and commissioning is done by EPC contractor. So the production operation in this area may not have the overall site visibility of the entire activity. Like when will the commissioning be done? When will something be introduced? When is the work complete, etc. So what happens in this case that commissioning will, uh, EPC contractor will be doing their own things. Production operation will be doing their own things. And before they start introducing hazardous substances into the new equipment, so basically you can say before commissioning, we need to do a planning and interface management. And that's what SIMOPS is, or that's the essence of SIMOPS, this management. And we will talk about what is the important part, where does HSE come in in this management and why is it important? So that's what SIMOPS is. When two work permits are issued by two parties, so you need to identify who will be overseeing both the activities and who will be the uh, responsible team or responsible person who will, who will gain and who will, who will get an oversight of both the processes. So that's the main part of SimOps management. Okay. So how, um, just reiterating my previous point, um, previous explanation, how is SimOps different from normal operations? So in SimOps, it's combination of risk activities carried out simultaneously by parties independent of each other. So for example, one company may be working in one part and the other company, other APC may be working in other part of the plant. So examples here are failure in control leading to blowout of wells, for example, lead failure in well control. Damage and subsequent loss of integrity of flow lines. Hot works in the presence of hydrocarbon. Work activities in presence of toxic substances. So when you have a combination of risk activities, this leads to increase in operational or management complexities, obviously. Which, leads, uh, which further leads to that the per, per people working on the facility or adjacent communities, so even uh, people who are not even the workers, but they may be residing near the facility, are exposed to higher risk conditions. And that's why SimOps is different from normal operation because there's a combination of risk activities. <clears throat> so when this happens, Uh, because there is increase in number of, uh, when you are doing simultaneous operations there and there is complexity because of different work activities carried out by different contractors. All this leads to complex lines of command at the working level. Therefore, safe implementation of SimOps requires effective planning, control and coordination. Now, I have, I was just working on example, although it's not complete yet, but I think it will be very useful to introduce it now. Uh, although it was for some other presentation, it's not fully complete, but, and it's not actually a SIMOS, but it gives you some indication of what can go wrong when there are multiple lines of command and, or you can say when the lines of command are not clearly defined. Oops. 
So can you see my screen in, with the new slide? Mr. Ramana, can you please comment? Yes, 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 it is visible. Okay, okay. Just enlarge uh, it, please. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to enlarge, but uh, for and some full screen, in full screen, it's going funny, so I'll just enlarge it here. Yeah, it's, it's good, it's good, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So this is an example from one of the case studies. Um, and for this is taken from BP's Loss Prevention Bulletin, which is a publication done by Institute of Chemical Engineers in UK. Um, so this is an example of a facility, you can say, uh, where there is a flare stack, which was used to dispose of uh, the surplus flue gas using a fuel gas holder, um, using a fuel gas gas holder. As you can see, there's gas coming in and then gas, uh, gas deposit in the gas holder. From gas holder, it goes to via booster pump, the gas which you need, it goes to furnaces and the balance, uh, the remaining surplus gas via valve C and B goes to the flare stack. Now, because uh, uh, talking about, um, uh, coincidentally, it also touches on the previous uh, presentation where there was uh, the accident happened because I think because of some misalignment of valves and human error and all. Um, so this also shows there's a trend in like um, how the ergonomics and ease of use, et cetera, Play, and play a role in accidents or, or their prevention. So because valve B was more approachable and valve C was not, valve C was kind of always kept open. It was not locked open, but it was always kept open. And valve B was the only, you can say real uh, prevention for, uh, for not rooting. Uh, for a real, not real prevention was a real um, implementation measure to direct the gas to the flare step. Now, um, because this was in some facility and there was flue gas coming, fuel gas coming from another plant via valve A. One day, what happened was that the operator handling the fuel gas gas holder noted that there is some decline in the level. So um, a decline in the fuel gas um, inventory. So he therefore imported some gas from another unit and then put more gas in the fuel gas gas holder. Uh, but even then, after half an hour, the fuel gas gas holder was sucked in. There was vacuum and it was sucked in. Uh, so when, um, obviously, investi upon investigation, it was found out that elsewhere in the plant, a flare stack had to be taken out for service. And the person who was the operator who was working on that plant, he thought that he should direct that fuel gas to this flare stack via valve A and B. So he opened valve A and opened valve B uh, and actually he locked open them to use, the, uh, to use this flare stack. And uh, another point which came out in the investigation was that he had done this before. So he was quite confident he was doing the right thing. And third thing, he told it, he mentioned it to three people in his team that I'm doing this, they said, yeah, okay, fine, do it, go ahead. But he didn't think that he should, he also has to tell the person who is managing this gas holder because, because he did not even think that this man will be, that there's another concern over that side. So consequently, when he opened valve B, all the gas from uh, through the valve C, from the fuel gas via valve C get all, also get got through the flare stack and there was a vacuum in gas holder and it, just sucked in and damaged and all that. So what do we learn from is that the responsibility for each item of equipment should be clearly defined at the supervisor, foreman and operator levels. Only the people responsible for each item should operate it. Where different teams are allowed to operate the same equipment, then sooner or later an incident will occur. Now, all these words, they are very easy to write on paper and very difficult to get implemented and get them right all the time. And just as Mr. Ujwal mentioned before, uh, if there are humans, errors will happen. So the best, uh, best uh, uh, you can say your best ammunition against human error is um, obviously uh, uh, training, talking about it as much as possible, work culture, but on top of it, getting the design right, which is called the preventive measures. If your design is inherently safe, 
human error can be minimized. So, uh, and then that's a separate discussion topic in itself. So let's leave it here. Uh, let me go back to the original presentation. How are we doing? Uh, can you see the presentation? Yes. Okay, great, thank you. So uh, coming back to SimOps, so how are SimOps risks managed? They're managed through a formal SimOps management process by integrating identification, elimination where possible, and planning, scheduling, communication, and supervision. And these are the different aspects. How do we do it? Uh, different stages. Step number one, we do like a risk as a, do a do a review. Uh, it can be a hazard style review or a what if style review or any review which you feel comfortable for your case to identify the SIMOPS and try to eliminate SIMOPS as much as possible. There may be some bits of uh, which you can eliminate. You can say we can do it at a later time when there is no SIMOPS or we can do it done in the factory before the equipment comes um, or to the site. So you have eliminated some bits of the SIMOPS and there will be some residual bits left. For those ones, we define the work scope, which is step two. And once the work scope is identified, then produce task specific dossiers. What that basically means is just put some details of what this task is, how much of it will be SimOps, what activities will be done, et cetera. So once you know your activities, do a risk assessment, which is a hazard style risk assessment and know your risks. So for example, um, if there is crane activity, then high wind may be a risk. If there is hot work, then presence of hydrocarbon will be a risk and all this can be done in a hazard. So once we have done our hazard and we know our risks, our hazards, then we do the actual SimOps review, which, is a, which includes development of MOPO. What is MOPO? MOPO is matrix of permitted operations. So basically this is a matrix which tells when you are doing activity A, you are allowed to do activity B, C, D, and E, but you should not do activity F, G, H, and I, for example. And I'll show you a, a sample MOPA. So interface, uh, then the rest is interface documents and integrated plan, preparation for SimOps on site, SimOps operations. So once you start doing SimOps, there will be deviations. So wherever you find a deviation, you have to go back to the design board and start from one again. So that's one way of representing the same thing I've represented in uh, another figure. So these are the steps one by one listed. And so first three spe steps, for example, identifying the need for SimOps, eliminating it, identifying the work scope, et cetera. They all come under assumption and scenario definition, identification of SimOps requirement. Following that you do risk assessment and QRA. Now QRA is an interesting bit in SimOps. It's not done all the time, but there may be some cases where QRA may be useful tool in some um, SimOps elimination of or SimOps management or cost elimination and time, um, time reduction. And then the rest three steps are implementation. Okay, I'm not going through all the eight again. So now we will talk about each step one by one. Why is it important? So identify the SimOps activities and review if rescheduling or relocation can aid in preventing SimOps. Uh, so that one I've already explained that we do an assessment to see what we can screen out and what is left, then we do some kind of a review on, a review on it. So once we have done that, then we come to establishing SimOps or proximity zones. What is a proximity zone? Proximity zone is area where SimOps activities must be identified. So for example, if you're working in a, in, a, in a refinery, you are in one area, then you will not shut down the entire refinery. You will shut down only the area which you think may affect your SimOps area, may affect may, the gas may migrate from one unit up to the point of the hot control, hot, hot works. They, then you will see, okay, I only need to uh, shut down only this much area, only this much pipeline, et cetera. Now this can be done qualitatively and most of the time that's how it is done in facilities but if some wells are involved if uh, oil fields are involved then this can also be done quantitatively 
uh, and especially if there are H2S zones, because um, H2S, uh, hydrogen sulfide, highly toxic, even in very low concentrations, um, because if you will start developing a contour of H2S to, uh, to a safe concentration, it will cover very big area, which may not be practically possible to isolate all that, uh, everything in that area. So that, that's where the QRA part comes. And, uh, and as it says here, we will discuss this methodology in the next diagram, but I've introduced something about QRA. So this will be about two or three slides later. So for example, if you look at this one, uh, this is from a real life facility. And this was a challenge uh, that you have a well, which has H2S in it. And if you have to dig another well next to it, then how do you do it? Because there will be flow lines and everything. And if you say H2S, if you look at the H2S dispersion contour, how far the H2S can go up to a safe limit, then this would cover a region of about a kilometer or so. And obviously you cannot uh, isolate everything in there. So therefore this company, uh, I'm not allowed to take names because of confidentiality and all that. So therefore this company decided to come up with some criteria of, of, a, of what we call risk tolerance criteria, which is if you, if you people are familiar with the labs, if some people, I'm sure some people there are familiar with the lab, this like you define, I can live with a risk up to this level. So uh, this company came up with a criteria of 300 ppm H2S at a frequency of 10 to minus four per year, uh, which in this case is the orange color cloud. So anything which is in the orange color cloud will be shut off. So it basically means that uh, this entire well pad was covered. So and this entire well pad becomes a SIMOPS area and SIMOPS controls which were identified in MOPO were applied to the all of this area. Compare this with another well which does not have H2S. And because this does not have H2S, uh, the criteria which was chosen from QRA was one was the uh, was the location specific individual risk again this is a qra term i my apologies some people may not be familiar with that term but uh, i've got limited time um, so they come up with some risk level for lsir and that was covered by this uh, turquoise circle as you can see which is much smaller than h2s zones so that that's where we when we use qra there was some um, obviously uh, you manage your SIMOPS into a smaller area. So there were a lot of cost saving, time saving and all that. And this is how the challenges were overcome because a normal methodology would have been that wherever you are working, whatever is in the area should be shut down. But these were the challenge. That's how these challenges were overcome. So these are two real life examples again. So the diagram I was talking about, this is a summary of how you do your, how you do your, uh, how you identify your proximity zones based on the QRA. I think I'm running short of time, so I will leave this one for now. And if time permits, I'll come back to it. The next part is risk assessment, which is the hazard part. Not much to say there. People are already, I think, familiar with the hazard or some safety reviews. So we do the same thing. Challenge by the simultaneously, simultaneous activities cannot be prevented or rescheduled for a later date. So there's no SIMOPS. And the other things are just like hazard, identify all the foreseeable hazards and threats, assess and evaluate consequences. Number three, preliminary identification of requirements for any specialized support. So if you need any special support, if you need any new, um, more people, if you need some special vehicles, if you need, for example, um, uh, sparkless instruments, sparkless vehicles, uh, battery operated forklift trucks, uh, things like that. Uh, apply cost benefit analysis for approving or disapproving the SIMOPS activity. So once we have done the MOPO, metrics of permitted operations, and once we have done the hazard, and we know what safeguards we have to take, sometimes these safeguards may be very, very difficult to implement, may be very costly, and then the whole SIMOPS activity can be discounted. Okay, we don't need this activity. We will do it some other way, or we will take a shut, full shutdown and do it. And the main thing about SIMOPS is two-barrier concept. I'll come back to two-barrier concept. So just bookmark that for the two barrier concept. I think next, uh, some other slide will talk about it. 
And when you do a hazard, this is an example of a typical risk assessment matrix, how you identify your risks, very high, very low. If something is in high category, this means this should not, the design should be re-engineered. If something is in yellow category or um, orange category, that means that we can go ahead with it, but we, um, only and only if, if sufficient safeguards have been put in place to show that we, we have done as much as we can. So we've done the risk assessment. Uh, I think let's introduce two, two, <coughs> two step barrier here. What that means is that for SIMOPs, wherever there is a SIMOP, there should be a two barrier approach. So one barrier will be your, will be your work permit, um, permit to work. And the other one should be some other barrier. So it may be a safety, it may be, sorry, a functional, I'm sorry. It may be a safety integrated function, safety, a SIL, SIL kind of function, or it can be some procedural function or some other, but, and those things are highlighted in the MOPA. So, the, so once we've done that, we do a SIMOPS integrated plan. What is a SIMOPS integrated plan? This is development of MOPO uh, and just boundaries of accountabilities and responsibilities and assigning a person in charge. Uh, so let's quickly go through it. This is what a MOPO looks like. Um, unfortunately, it's not zoomed enough, but whatever things we have identified, they are in the rows, they are in the rows, and they're also in columns. And for whatever you see for a particular activity, whatever you see in green, that means that these activities can happen at the same time. The ones in red, they should never happen at the same time. And the ones which are in yellow, there are numbers inside them. So they can only happen at the same time if the safeguard number X, Y, Z has been implemented. So this is a zoomed uh, version. This is how it looks like. A red means no, a green means yes. And the numbers inside this, this is a safeguard number in the list of safeguards, which is for example, looks like this. Safeguard number one, not allowed for crane operations. Safeguard number five, for example, not allowed for <coughs> flash point, low flash point chemicals. Number nine, for example, not allowed for adjacent well. Number 13, subject to radiation safety procedures. These are the kind of safeguards we put in and produce a MOPO for simultaneous operations. The next step, as I said, are about implementation, do an integrated plan review. So once you put all the SIMOPS documentation together, just a holistic view and a final SIMOPS review is basically validation of all the measures in the field. Uh, now coming on to the most important part about roles and responsibilities because this is the main thing about SIMOPS, person in charge. What is a person in charge? Person in charge is the person who has visibility of the permit to work requ requirements from both or more than two or more than two facilities which are potentially impacted. So the main essence of SIMOPS is to appoint a person in charge. Uh, generally, this person of in charge comes from the team which is doing the most high risk activity or, um, uh, sorry, first step would be it comes from the team which is doing the new work. So for example, um, there's an existing unit in a refinery or in, or in a oil producing exploration producing company. And then a drilling contractor comes in in, a, uh, in upstream operations or another contractor, EPC contractor comes in to put a new, uh, new vessel in a refinery, then that team should appoint a person in charge. It should be their responsibility to make sure that all the permit to works are arranged and they're talking to each other, et cetera. If there are more, if there are like say two or three new, new contractors doing the same, uh, doing the activity, then the contractor, which is doing the highest risk activity they should appoint a person in charge. These are just general rule of thumbs. Obviously, it depends organization to organization, activity to activity. And then the main task of PIC is to have a smooth interface with functional supervisors and obtain authorization and provide authorizations. So um, two barrier concept, I think I've already explained. The bottom line, we have already seen lots of accidents in process industry. And together we should make sure that uh, another one doesn't happen. 
And just uh, building upon the uh, very good comments which Mr. Ritwick made in, uh, in the uh, introduction after the first presentation. Um, human factors will always remain a big cause because obviously it's us operating the facility and because we are humans and mistakes always happen. But work culture, safety culture is a very slow and very steady process. But if we keep trying, if we keep trying, if we keep trying, we get the fruits of it at the end. A very good example is the culture of wearing seat belts. When, the, when seat belts were introduced for the first time in 1980s, they were really seen as a nuisance. But if you keep sending the same message again and again and again, it's, it somehow settles into the minds and hearts of people and it sinks in and people start seeing value in it. So where me and you stand today, we are engineers working in process and high hazard industries. The least we can do is just talk about events and talk about actions in our own groups developing a positive safety culture. The main thing about process incidents is that, uh, that they should be talked about. There are some companies where the culture is that these incidents are not talked about and, uh, and mistakes are tried, people try to hide them, but we should at least talk about that the culture to aim for is the one where it's open to safety and receptive to safety. Hopefully one day we will get there. Thank you all very much and open to questions now. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mohammed Muniz. Uh, it was a wonderful presentation and uh, uh, I'm happy that we have you uh, speaking here. In fact, uh, you have uh, kicked off a very important activity because, uh, you know, Kuwait and uh, Middle East uh, as a whole a lot of construction activities uh, are taking place where, uh, you know, different parties, they work together. Uh, so it is, uh, SIMOPS uh, is an important uh, program that uh, uh, I, I would suggest that um, any HSC professional at least should have, uh, 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 you know, I won't say in-depth knowledge, but at least a working knowledge need to be there. And I would you know, seriously request uh, the committee to request you to arrange for a more established, uh, you know, a longer session wherein uh, we can take benefit of your experience. Now, as Mr. Munish said, uh, uh, let's have a few questions, please. Uh, when you are asking questions, switch on your mic and introduce yourself and then uh, briefly state your question. Go ahead. We have uh, over 70 people listening. Sir, before going there, I just need to put uh, the online quiz questions so that uh, people will answer. I need to work on the uh, you know, recognition certificates. So let them answer in the meantime. Okay, you are the boss. Ramana. I'm so sorry. I think I took much longer than the time which was allotted. Yeah, it's to okay. Me. Yeah, the it's, okay. Okay. it's okay. It's the okay. The problem is it when is it's all. full screen, you don't see the time on your screen. No, no, it's okay. We are. We all learn. We all learn. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We learned from you. Thanks. Thanks so much. It's an honor. You said that. Good evening, all. Uh, the online quiz questions are posted through the link. Google form will be open if you click the link and uh, there are five questions where you need to answer and the uh, quickly answered five members will be recognized immediately. Okay. And uh, whoever answers these questions, it is not mandatory to uh, answer all the questions as correct. Okay. If you participate in this one, you will get a certificate of participation immediately. So click the link and I add the details. Immediately you will get the participation certificate in your inbox. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, so the questions will be visible on the screen, Ramana. You are sharing uh, your no, screen? Or? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. if you want, I can share it. That's also a better idea. Yes, sir. 
yeah it will be yeah. interesting for people to know what questions because some okay I may not try like me i am scared of such quizzes <laughs> okay no, sir so i know i will fail so yeah this is different one actually google forms so they have to uh, it is not like zoom polling sir this is different one they have to click the options and uh, they have to submit then immediately i'll get the results here mm -hmm. get the answers here good that's good. smart very nice simple questions five questions mm -hmm. i have given so in in question number 4 it's yeah. b l e v e yes and uh, by mistake uh, double e is printed so please uh, not double e as a b not double b l e v e oh okay okay because i took it from uh, no issues uh, no issues presentation okay thank you uh, i will change it no problem now it's now it's it. so you are asking uh, all the participants to try the quiz and get a certificate yeah and uh, meantime they can ask the questions also okay so i would yeah i think that's a good idea to save so time so pawan is right sir uh, yeah so mr pawan uh, you have some question to mr mohammed munis switch on your mic please unmute <laughs> mr pawan okay anyone else is having a question i am quite sure uh, uh, mr mohammed munis has uh, you know uh, he must yeah, have uh, yeah go ahead go ahead hmm. go ahead mr makbul uh, sorry may i just uh, sorry sorry mr makbul before we go there just one thing to the quiz organizer Hello? yeah yeah please uh, the answer for question number 3 okay is not uh, i think there's some error in the code it's not right because i just failed on what is mopo <laughs> 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 so uh, so this, this is called just correct this is called uh, learning from failures it did <laughs> okay so sorry Hello? mr mangul go ahead please uh the oh, answer yeah. is yeah you mean no problem just uh... yeah because I, i i'm sure i clicked on the right answer but it is showing me that this answer is wrong uh Hello. okay no no issues you can you can tell the answer please okay that is so done by me only okay okay so uh, the quiz is showing that the correct answer is maintenance of permitted operations yeah so matrix answer... Answer should be matrix of permitted operation. Yeah. Okay. Matrix. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Well, my name is Pawan. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm a Mr. Mr. Pawan. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So my uh, question is like, uh, Simops. Uh, While well, the crane working over the live flow line in the glass mm -hmm. plant is considered as a Simops. Uh, so um, this is just going back to the difference between. Uh, concurrent operation and simultaneous operation so th this crane um, whatever activities it is doing uh, in uh, i believe it is in a live area or in a hydrocarbon area and you are lifting right. over a pipeline right yes that is the question so uh, the the uh, the team which is running the pipeline or which manages the pipeline if the same team has given you the permit to work to to do the crane operations then it's not a simops it's just a normal concurrent operation there's a normal day to day work in any facility because overhead by overhead the power lines will be there and beneath if there is any pipelines flow line is there yes in that area if we are yeah. working with the crane or any other thing activities yeah. so may then, I know in which company are you i'm from uh, ugcc united gulf construction company okay So, But this for is my example, past experience because yeah. one of my in uh, uh, my safety guy said that mm -hmm. it will consider as a simops because 
the flow line is going up from the bottom and the power line is going from the top and you're working is already in the process the flow line and this uh, uh, upline uh, power cables yes if you're working it will be considered as smog then yeah. i had this i was i was not that much sure but uh, we have conducted as a smog so i still have a doubt in that so um when i worked in lfho uh, yeah yeah development uh, low force uh, heavy oil okay yeah. so there we have to say if it is simox or not that's uh, again based on a case by case basis so for example uh, let's say the same thing is happening for example in koc or in lfho your previous employer then sometimes the production operations uh, through the electrical engineering department they cover the supply o in the lines which are going through but if these are high tension lines coming from say a doha power station then somebody else is responsible for them so as long as uh, you can shut down the electricity in the lines and uh, and get the flow um, sorry get the get the uh, pipeline isolated or drained and mm-hmm. work in that area all done by the same team it's not okay. a simple but, uh, but the power lines won't be shut down we have the clearance yes. then it will be a simops but yeah. but even if we say yeah, it's simops by definition it does not mean that you have to do all the rigorous works which i just explained in my presentation because they are for some very complex scenarios in your scenario you are lifting over a pipeline with this pipeline and that and your activity probably are managed by the same team so that can be considered as one activity now the only activity which is remaining is the electricity in the power lines yeah. so the only thing uh, which your simops coordinator has to do is to manage only one activity that when you are doing crane operations there should not be no electricity in the in the power lines and he just has to maybe pick a phone or check by some other means that there is no electricity and then he gives a go ahead for crane operations Yeah. You finish your yeah. crane operation. Yeah. Your simops is done. You don't have to go into details of QRA, developing a detailed mopo, um, doing a hazard mm-hmm. and all that. But what we But have by done definition, there, like, yes, it will be simops. Yeah, simops, right? Because yeah. we can't uh, call this uh, power line to shut down or the flow line to shut down because it's all cost, right? So they consider as a simops, and we have the clearance from the power lines, and even from the flow line also, we had a clearance. but it is considered the simops so i little i was not into that i'm not yeah. uh, i'm not really i felt that it's not simops but ultimately when the risk assessment everything done it was specified as a simops so when you were saying that i was fucking yeah. with that whether it comes in simops or not but yes it is simops by definition SIMOPS. but it's not one of the most complex simops i i think because uh, you know right in the rainy season it says uh, it's 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 like like a potential right true Anyhow, okay, I got that. Uh, good, uh, good question and good interaction. Uh, uh, let's have uh, one more question, please. Please uh, switch on your mic, introduce yourself, and uh, shoot your question. Uh, Mr. Subarav, you have some question. Please unmute yourself. uh mr S- mr safi uh, you can ask your question yes i think i can unmute now subara ah, okay. we are uh... okay 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 sorry for the delay sir carry on yeah it's okay yeah first my you are very far away yeah i am first uh, very good evening to a mentor for the whole kuwait mr rutvik good evening sir Mm-hmm. thank nice, you nice uh, you know good evening good nice to hear you time. go ahead yeah, with your yeah, question sure. thank you yeah only one question to mr mohammed like have you experienced any company integrating the hcc management system and frost safety management system i developed an integrated system with your knowledge like we adnoc i work for adnoc here we are in that process actually how it is working and any interface issues Uh, to be honest in my experience the whole thing works only when hsc and psm management systems are integrated if you have a, a separate hsc management system and a psm management system and if there are two separate teams they are always at loggerheads 
HSE keeps thinking that PSM is here to take their job, and PSM keeps thinking that HSE is not letting them work, and all those kind of politics in, is typical of a, uh, some parts of the world. Um, yeah. It's all those types of problems. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, I can't give an example of an integrated HSC and uh, PSM management system from uh, this part of the world. But oh. in UK, uh, I have been with two or three international operators. And there the structure was that the, on the top, there was an HSC manager and uh, who was TA1, Technical Authority 1. Uh, oh, yeah, the, ah, okay. Somewhere in Europe. And under him, there were an HSC manager on the asset, or you can say in business unit. So UK was one business unit and Denmark was another business unit and France was another business unit. And there was a PSM TA2, technical authority too. And then ultimately both, there were two parallel management systems, but ultimately there was some convergence. So that convergence is very important that one person should be able to give direction to both of them and assign their own duties and responsibilities. So there is no clash. But if these two teams are always in parallel, then I think there is uh, no clear definition of responsibilities and boundaries. Yeah, that's the reason. Integration is basically intended only to see that, you know, uh, one authority controls the overall uh, system, you know. Yes, yes. You can have a number of people, you know, experts in different organizations, but overall... Uh, currently, oh, no. this is an issue, as you said. No, PSM is not my area. Somebody's area. Technical, technical center say that it is their area, yeah. and HSC says it's my area. And when it comes to the process safety audits and all that, so yes, I'm just yes. looking, you know. Yeah. Okay. So it's maybe during uh, uh, Subarav, maybe during uh, you know open session uh, um, networking session, possibly yeah. someone from KNPC can explain you where they have already done this. Ah, oh, very good. So ah. I mean, and it is not new. It was done about four years back. Ah, so okay, then I think uh, I can possibly can yeah, you can interact in with some also, of your yeah. you know past. I was there when I talked to was there on the offline. Right. Yeah, Vasu. Yeah, Vasu would be a nice candidate. Right, Great. Sir, uh, is you. there any other question to Mr. Muhammad Muniz? Oh yes, uh, sir, sir, sir. I have questions, sir. Go ahead. Introduce yes, yourself. Yeah, this is Murugandam, sir, from KOC. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mohammed, for a nice uh, presentation on CIMAP. Uh, uh, Mohammed, is there any international standard to give the responsibility for the who has to create the MOPA? Like, you know, permitted of operation, yeah. matrix of permitted operation. You know, now I have the uh, LBG plant or GC. After some time, after uh, some time, uh, the new nearby uh, drilling well is coming. Now there is a challenging issue is there. That's why is there any international standard or no, any unfortunately, regulations? There is no, unfortunately, there's no guideline which can put in black and white that this team always will be the one who will develop the MOPO. But as I said, the person in charge comes from the team, which is, you can say, the visitor team or the team which is producing the, which is managing the most high risk activity. So because they are putting the person in charge, Ideally, they should take a lead on developing the MOPO. But it's good that you mentioned KOC, um, keeping work cultures of different parts of the world in mind. Um, in KOC, it will be best um, managed by the contractor who's coming into work, I think. Uh, there are oh. two, two jobs I know in KOC about uh, SimOps and well operations. And uh, MOPO was, for, for one was done by Shell and for one, the other one was done by BP. Yeah, very correct. At the same time, you know, other ministry uh, installations are coming near to our KOC facilities. That is also challenging. Yeah. Now we have the our, our facilities coming and uh, their ministry facilities are coming. So, um, so I, I think it won't be the best use of time to force ministry to do MOPO. But whatever contractor is coming to your site, uh, you should include it in uh, their scope of work that you need a SimOps management and they should do it via MOPO. And KOC has a KOC has a SIMOPS procedure, although it is for H2S wells only at the moment, but uh, it can be like uh, extrapolated to cover rest of the activities. And that uh, procedure mentions where should the PIC come from and who should develop the MOPO. 
yeah you can use so thank you sir the next question now sure. there is a two two installation is coming there is no hydrocarbon involved the uh, semap is required there is a two uh, two installation is nearby aha uh -huh. uh, there is both are construction there is no hydrocarbon involved the semap is required semap study um is there any interaction between the two like for example your crane operations of operation a are they going over operation b or is there no, no the there is, no no they have separate fronts so they are two different fronts as so you shown in your presentation i don't know one is in production no that's why there is no international standard means there is no is yeah thank you thank because you. there is no interaction yeah. at all thank you okay thank you. Uh, let's have a one final question before we move into the next phase of this meeting sure anyone having uh, mr shafi has raised hand uh, yeah go ahead mr you. shafi if you still have a question yes sir hello thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity i am uh, safi sheikh uh, sir my uh, question is just as a query uh, i am asking uh, is there any uh, specific audit or any inspections to uh, uh, to find out uh, smep any to uh, to uh, to update or to develop the smep what uh, sir mr mohammed has told any audits are there anything just to any improve or to uh yani just to uh, for everything uh, like for example hazop for uh, yeah. anything we have an audit so for this also is there any specific audit and if it is so for this standard it has been followed yes um so which company are you from sorry i'm i'm from knpc okay now i don't know about knpc is a work structure but uh, uh, if if you are doing a pha audit process okay. hazard analysis methods audit or if you are doing an moc audit so uh, for example uh, in my experience for mocs it's very rare to see a simops case but mostly it's for projects so if it's a project or an moc if you do a project audit or an moc audit then for an moc or a project you will identify that what kind of safety reviews were identified as required and then okay. uh, as an auditor you will go through okay, if a hazard was at where is the hazard report where is hazop report where is simops report what were the actions raised how were they implemented how were they closed out that's the only audit i can think of which will cover simops so, but per se there is no uh, nobody does uh, a, a separate simops audit okay okay because i just wanted to know if any separate uh, is there audit or inspection that is what i wanted to ask Uh, if i'm a, if i'm a project engineer for if i'm a project manager for example and uh, it's a very big simops activity so for example if i'm working as in knpc i'm the project manager for knpc and i have given a work to some pmc and it's a very big simops activity then i may um, audit their simops preparation plan which is part of your simops preparation the six steps i mentioned Okay. And the the infield uh, the final one about uh, I've forgotten the exact term, but this was basically the field verification of your CMOS preparation. That's kind of an audit, and it's very and it's an important and it's an integral part of the whole CMOS methodology, the infield verification. And that verification is, I can say, say that verification is another word for auditing. Okay. Uh, good. Uh, thank you. Uh, Uh, now uh, we need to move forward but uh, since someone one more question uh, i mean the hand has been chat. raised by mr seeker Bhag bhagwati yes sir uh, do you have a question Something yes sir very quick yeah thank you very much mr mohammed munis for your presentation you welcome my pleasure yeah. and uh, regarding the simops operations the two activities are going in the same vicinity two mm -hmm. teams are working in the okay. same vicinity Uh -huh. but before starting the activity we need to do the risk assessment with the facility owner right yes but when you mentioned that there is a person in charge but two contractors are working in the same simultaneous same place uh -huh. how the same two contractors will this person in charge the contractor a and contractor b different contractors are working in the different uh, uh, same facility with the different uh, risk assessment with the asset owner how it can be a person in charge for the two contractors can you please yeah. explain so may i know in which context which company are you from so i'll answer and try to answer in that context pardon uh, if you if you, if you could tell me which company are you from then i'll try to answer in that context i am i'm presently working with the koc 
okay usi so uh, okay your question is that there are two contractors working they have their risk assessments yeah and so how do we decide on the person in charge right that's yeah. that's the question yeah correct okay so um, the this the risk assessment which i mentioned was specifically to work out simops okay so if you have two contractors they may have their own hazards they may have their own hazops yeah but they are their own studies they are not they are not dealing with the interaction of operations a and operations b operations yeah. of contractor a and operations of contractor b okay uh, when when they when they have to do something in uh, together or interacting way yeah then either they sit down together which is the best way or operator a can work out that they need to do simops and as i said the first step in the methodology they need to work out what will be the activities which will be potential simops which ones can be ruled out which ones can be eliminated and yeah. then the residual activities for example 10 activities are left out then they develop their own mopo to say if we have to do activities 1 to 10 then we need to request operator b to shut down or to 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 impair their operations x y and z then they take it to operator b uh, contractor b and say we request these things from you probably they will agree or they will say no we don't agree then they sit down together and then again this depends on the uh, depends on the client so somebody from koc will have to step up to do that to to play that interface then based on koc procedure the person the contractor who is handling the higher risk activity should appoint a pic okay but in this case the person in charge will be the from the That operation uh, so owner. with this uh, asset owner uh, uh, we you 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 can email me or I'm query later or you can call me in koc later i will explain yeah i think that will be a good idea no we will have still more time okay, don't sir. worry uh, okay. we can uh, i mean people can still remain in the in conversation uh, 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 before we before we end i uh, i would request uh, uh, you know assc assp committee member to uh, take this uh, opportunity uh, to uh, uh, to and make some announcements and uh, you know uh, their future plan and all that immediate uh, future plans they can talk about uh mazhar uh, are you the one who will be speaking or is it safdar hello yeah go ahead ha uh, uh, yes sir please tell me no no uh because the next item on the agenda is announcement by assp about uh, forthcoming activities uh yes i think uh... sabdar sab sab okay no issues uh, let me continue sir uh, so uh, for our future activities in regards to psm we will also have the next technical meet on the third week of the december inshallah and uh, we are also planning for nivos igc at the end of this uh, month and uh, we are all currently doing one lead auditor 45000 one batch with tuv Uh, and we got a very good response so we are planning the next batch also uh, which will also start in shall in uh, that same period maybe the first week of december we will start it uh, these are the three things currently in the pipeline and anything any suggestions from the members or committee people uh, they, those are welcome so we can plan accordingly uh, whatever cur- current plan we do have for this quarter uh, we are well ahead of that plan and uh, one more request which we are doing every time i request uh, speakers to come out for the next uh, technical meet for the psm so that we can plan in well advance and we can uh, send email to our people in advance so they can plan accordingly their time uh, because sometimes we are getting details very late and nominations very late so we can you know many plans are already there for the people 
so i request all of you that please within a week i request send your nominations for the speaking uh, in next technical meet uh, here uh, i just want to uh, talk uh, this one that see uh, why i like anirban's uh, he he was not uh, into preparing powerpoint presentations and making uh, you know video and this and that it's it's it, it can be very simple of course you can make as uh, as fancy as you want but come forward with uh, any simple case study 5 minutes 10 minutes maximum 15 minutes and uh, that is what uh, you know uh, is the beauty of this meeting go ahead please mother yeah thank you sir thanks for adding so exactly as uh, ujwal sir said uh, this is not a kind of conference where we are going to present a very fancy stuffs okay a one slide also or one piece of paper one case study will do here this is a meeting we are meeting here as a professionals uh, of the assp family and you can share your experience with anything uh, doesn't need uh, inshallah i've given a ch chance i will share with you the whole case study in one slide uh, which will give idea to all of you that yes we can we don't need to make any fancy slide or anything so please and i i would like to thanks this both of the speakers i know them personally uh, for our request they have said yes in uh, one shot so thanks a lot uh, once again to both of the speakers uh, mr ramanna yes maja ji uh, could you please uh, move to the next slide for mr anivan or mr munish so thanks mr mohammad munish uh, thanks uh, i know you personally and uh, it is really nice working with you if, in psm and today uh, we are lucky to have you on board and welcome to this uh, platform and uh, we expect that you share more and more experience uh, because i know you wo worked in the europe's energy yeah. hub which is oil and gas hub of the europe we can say in aberdeen and you learned a lot from there so we request you to share more and more on this uh, with our assp psm family uh, thank you so much maybe uh, one of maybe one of these days uh, if he can give a uh, you know full uh, one hour two hour session on uh, uh, simops or you know, some of the emerging issues that will be very good to learn from him yes correct. it's an honor for me as well i'm feeling humble with all the good words and i will definitely try to do my best to 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 promote the knowledge i thank you thank you thank you mr manish thank and you also thanks to our another speaker mr anirban thanks so much and uh, we are really surprised the way you have presented it is really nice uh, very clear very understandable and uh, i'm i'm just telling you that you you can be a very good presenter by seeing your presentation uh try more and more and i'm i request you also and all other people also you all have heard anil mr anil but today how nice he has present i think he has presented first time in the psm meet so all all other people please don't think you have not presented or whatever okay this is the platform uh, that is why mr ujwal uh, has put this platform in two different way one experienced person will share here and another the new person will share so that is not only the sharing but that is to raise your confidence confidence also uh, so please come up with uh, your presentations whatever you want to share and uh, that's all from my side before i move to the thanks giving uh, i would like mr ashok garlapati to say a few words about today's event uh, ashok sir maja ji there are mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, online quiz recognition also i know i know i know wait for this please uh, ashok okay. sir thank you mr majja thank you mr ritwik sir for uh, establishing a platform uh, with a focus on psm i know mr munis uh, i have been uh, attending some of our meetings in koc but i am uh, very happy to see him in this particular psm forum he is a highly knowledgeable guy and uh, this particular forum is engaging such a subject matter experts is 
glad to know that so we are very we are very glad mr munis to be part of our uh, assp platform and we look forward that you take a leading volunteer role in our future events as well thank you thank you thank you thank you so much ashok sir uh, and i i can see vasudevan sir is also there with us today vasudevan sir please say few words about today's event a uh, greeting friends uh, thank you uh, uh, sir a uh, greeting sir ujjal uh, sahab ashok uh, as well as subaro i can hear him after a long time uh, it was really a wonderful session uh, especially the simops uh, it was uh, what wonderful as told by mr ritwik i think uh, it will be good if you can have a a good 3 uh, hour session for our members and uh, this is very relevant to the kind of activities right now going on in kuwait especially for our members who are in kipic and kpc and i'm sure in koc also uh, another good thing what i heard today was uh, you don't need to prepare slides as mr ritwik said if that is the case i can present in every meeting that is the only problem i have a lot of experiences Uh, i have faced so many emergencies in my last 30 years of experience which only talking for 10 minutes without slides uh, you can count on me on every meeting the only thing stops so excellent me... we have our next speaker <laughs> the only thing stops me from coming is making couple of slides and giving that beautification which is uh, the only hurdle i face otherwise i am ready to be on uh, any meet and share in 10 minutes my experience without naming the company where i when i'm working or where i experienced it for uh, obvious reasons thank you, thank uh, you. Uh, that thank you. that is what is for, uh, meeting for not for Alex. making uh, beautiful slides uh, and fancy you know powerpoints etc uh, etc et i mean that uh, uh, that uh, puts off so many people oh man one yet one more presentation i have to do this that means to be honest uh, i'm tired of making presentation exactly <laughs> what we need is let, let's say just a, a picture of a wall doing 8 9 hours of work uh, same thing again is difficult no no just put a picture of a wall and say that okay this is what happened everyone is focused people are listening to you and uh, uh, i i again and again and again i keep telling that powerpoint is the killer means it kills the 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 very essence of a meeting we need to speak we need to interact we need to do network we need to ask questions anyway i i, I don't want to take more time vasu please as mazhar is telling you are the next speaker <laughs> and uh, i will i will speak on my one of the one of the live personal experience of a major incident uh, personally I, i had faced i will talk about it mazhar it's all yours thank now. you so much vasudevan sir signing. so ramanna please for 16 december yes mazhar ji <coughs> i'll be ready uh, uh 16 december we have our uh, great speaker for experience sharing uh, mr vasudevan so that's good part yeah. and uh, now i i see my favorite bala sir bala sir please last time also you missed uh, to we want to hear from you few words for this event sir please unmute yourself bala sir ramana please check uh, yeah yeah i was trying actually he asked uh, some time but i was not there i didn't check the messages but now probably he is not there ramana possible to unmute from your side maybe he is unable to unmute from his side i am trying also for bala sir yes yes you are unable to do no no i am asking them to unmute some, some technical issue we are facing ah okay
okay meanwhile uh, uh ramanna please announce the result uh, maybe within that time we will have okay okay my brother sir ramanna yes yeah. yes my brother so thanks everyone for participating uh, those who all have participated will receive their certificates and uh, i request mr ramanna to announce the winners for today's quiz ramanna please go ahead all yours thank you majar ji and uh, today's uh, you know psm technical meet we received maximum participation out of 82 we received 70 Excellent. participation okay so and uh, wow. the quiz wow. answers first one received in 1 minute 10 seconds and uh, within 32 seconds we received five results five correct answers so i am going to announce only the five winners congratulations ashok sir once again you made the you know you made us the mark thank you very much for the participation and this is not fair ashok sir yeah and when he will be participating who can win <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh, no, it is a fastness bhai yeah it is not you know <laughs> one question related to mopo was wrong because that uh, ramana i think something made there but anyway it's all in the game yeah, yeah. no problem but after sir, that, he uh, changed everything he changed your answer became right changed. okay yeah that's why after correcting only i, I made it sir very after nice. correcting only i made the correct answers Perfect, yeah. perfect, Mr. Anirban. Excellent. Congratulations, Mr. Anirban. Congratulations, Mr. Anirban. Thank you, sir. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Vinay Kuru. Excellent, Mr. Vinay. Congratulations, Mr. Faisal Abdullah. All these, all these, uh, you know, five answers, five correct Masha answers. Wow. In thirty wow. seconds, they answered. Congratulations, Mr. Rahim Muhammad Yunus Sheikh. Thank you for excellent, your participation. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks everyone for participation, and uh, it's good that uh, you gave the fastest answer, Ramana. I think there are more people who have given the uh, right answers, but that is just a time difference. So yes, yes. congratulations, yeah, everyone. So uh, Ramana, could you please just tell the right answers? Okay. I'll uh, share the screen. This is the last portion of uh, our presentation. Then we will have our networking. Major sir. Hmm. Major sir, just please announce that uh, the next event on twenty fifth November webinar on ASP CSP recertification from Mr. Bala. Yes, yes, yes. Just. so you already announced it actually uh, after this i am trying to call bala sir uh, okay uh, ramana go ahead with the screen please so everyone those who missed maybe one or two questions will get the right answer yeah actually i didn't uh, you know participate in the quiz if i could have participated it was easy to demonstrate that one so now it will be like this only if i would have participated you know i can click the you know, question where i'll get the correct answers by in the screen so actually the participation is 100% because the core yeah yeah no problem just give an answer ramana give just give an answer read the question and give answer please okay No, 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 no. Hello. Can I give it? Uh, I think you are finding difficult uh, operating Hello. systems. Yeah, yeah. I okay. I can just scroll it down. Yes, yes. Body simaps. That is a simultaneous operation. Third bullet. 
and the second question is the fourth bullet fourth january 1996 when did the fire occur the first third one is what is mofo which is a matrix of matrix of no need to tick mark just yeah yeah just and expand believe that is on the third bullet boiling liquid expanding vapor explosions and the fifth bullet matrix. is what was the primary cause of the pipeline leak at faizan refinery uh. so that yes i think it is the last bullet so it is not i am not able to see that now but yes operational failure uh, by the plant operator yes <clears throat> good so the now i learned lot of things <laughs> that's why i didn't participate because i would have failed <laughs> good uh, i i i will sign Please, off now okay. thank you very much and uh, uh, guys uh, uh, you are doing great i i request once again all of you to come forward and participate in the meeting by doing presentation doesn't mean powerpoint presentation just present what you think what you want to share great uh, good night everyone see you next time thank you sir before going i just would like to thank uh, thank you on behalf of ec and uh, all the committees uh, thank you so much for sparing your time and giving your valuable comments and advices inshallah we will try to uh, incorporate immediately from the next presentation and we will improve gradually inshallah thank Please you so open much your cameras we need to take some uh, snapshots i request everyone to open your cameras please till many are not opened i know you have cameras please start i am just requesting few please bear with me yeah cheese don't worry we all are in night dress don't worry <laughs> that is not true that is the one positive effect yes. of one no three two one go thank you thank you ramana all the best thank you thank you thank you thank you, you, thank you so much thank you ruthvik sir thank you asok sir bala sir vasudev sir thank, thank you so much thank you thank you and uh, thank you everybody thank you so much uh, mr mohammad and uh, mr anirban really uh, as our uh, founder member uzwar ruthvik sir says that uh, we will invite you for uh, one another presentation and today you had kept all the members engaged when we started at 73 it was 54 people members and uh, Uh, at the peak time it was 80 84 and uh, you had kept engage all means at the last minute we see that 81 people were there so alhamdulillah it was so nice and uh, very informative once again thanks to you thanks to majhar to bring you in assp family thank you sir thank you thank you all for participating thank, thank you zaid bhai see you see you on 25th till then bye yes, Yes, twenty fifth. Uh, thank you. Take care. Thank you, sir. Good night, all. Good night. Yeah, Super Sonic speed, Ramana. We have got your certificates already.